Hey you and welcome back to the channel. So Resolve 18.5 is now in beta and you guys have access to it if you wanna download it. Now there are a ton of new features that I'll be covering as we go on. And keep in mind, as of right now, 18.5 is still in beta. So I don't recommend using this on your main projects because it's a beta, it can still be buggy right now. Usually I recommend waiting until the patch right before release or for the public release so that you're fully stable by the time you install this. Or even a patch after that as well when they usually tend to work out the bugs. Blackmagic is always really good at putting cool new features into their releases though so I think it's worth covering and I think I can teach you guys something cool about LUTs this week as well. So they've implemented a really cool feature this time as well and I figured I'd go through and show you guys the process on how to do it the old way and also the new improved way as well in the public beta so that you guys know what to do when this fully releases. Now before we jump into it though don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure to turn on all notifications so that you don't miss any new videos I post. I appreciate all of you that have subscribed already thank you so much we're well on our way to 2,000 subscribers with that though let's get into it so a while back I made a video covering LUTs and what they are I always meant to do a follow-up video as well but I just hadn't got around to it yet one of the topics I wanted to cover was what if you have a LUT that you really enjoy using but you just want to customize a little bit of what it's doing for you or maybe you just want to experiment with different parts of the same LUT now for the record I'm referring to a creative LUT so that's a LUT that doesn't do a technical transform so for example it doesn't change your footage from S log into Rec 709. It doesn't do that, it just adds simply a contrast curve and a color look to your image. In order to use Creative LUTs, you should know what color space it expects and what color space it's gonna return. And those two things should match. Now, if you want more of an explanation, I'll link my LUT video that I did down below and I'll also link it above as well so that you can go watch it after this video. So let's take this opportunity to look at our node tree here. All I want first is the technical transform for the image since this is a log image and I want to work in a predefined color space. For me, that's gonna be DaVinci White gamut. So on the first node, I'm going to open up the effects here in the top right and look up my color space transform. I'll drop it on this first node and this is an airy log 4 curve, so I'll choose that. Now I want to go to DaVinci wide gamut, so I'll select that here and turn off the mapping for now. I have another node at the end and we have to do the transform out from this to what my monitor can reproduce, so I'll add another color space transform and this time we're going from what we transformed into the first time, which is DaVinci wide gamut, into Rec 709. Now I can work in between here, in between these two nodes in what we call a working color space. So you can add another node in the middle where we'll be working and I have this LUT here, which I'll turn on so you can see what, what it's doing. If you're not sure where the LUTs are, you can go up here to the LUT folder and that's where Resolve will keep all of your LUTs, including any that you import as well. Now here I have this creative LUT already. You can see that if I enable and disable this node with the command D, it's adding contrast to the image and also pushing colors into the image while shifting some other ones. So it's doing a lot. Now, let's say you really love what it does to the colors, but the contrast is a little too heavy hitting and you'd rather build your own contrast curve or at least be able to back this one off a bit on your image. Well, if you didn't already know this, there is already a way to do this in Resolve currently, but it's a little bit more time consuming and a bit of a pain to do every single time. It involves using a layer mixer node. If you aren't sure about what a layer mixer does, essentially you have two nodes stacked on top of each other and then you have this mixer node here. It takes how many ever nodes you have and composites them, but it it gives priority to the bottom node in Resolve. That will always win out over your top node. It's kind of like a parallel node, but with priority. So if you wanted to modify a LUT you had before, you could set up a layer mixer like this. Then if you come to the actual mixer node here, right click on it and go to composite mode, which is the last option here. Now let's say I want to just mess with the contrast first. I'll select color as the composite mode and this is important. Come back to the first node here because remember it's flipped in terms of priority. And now we just go to the key output setting for the output gain here and I'll dial this back to zero. So if you saw what it did there, we now have all the color information from the LUT, but the contrast is gone. So effectively we've pulled the contrast out. If I reset this, watch the image and you'll see all the contrast come back. So we've dealt with removing the contrast, but we can go further here. If we flip this and say now we want to keep the contrast because we love what that's doing to the image, but we want to lose the color. It's not great. We can work with it better and create a better look, let's say, so we can do that too. Coming back to the layer mixer, we'll right click again and this time instead of color as the composite mode, 
we'll select luminosity. Same thing as before, we'll go to the first node and then output gain. And if I put this down to zero now, look at that. We've removed the color piece from the LUT, but the contrast still remains. You can see the difference because if I turn off the second node here, you see how the contrast goes in and out? That's because we're disabling the top layer of the node here, so we just have the transforms working at this point. So that's pretty cool, but what does this have to do with Resolve 18.5? Well, now they've made it a lot easier to do just this, which I think is amazing because it saves time and you don't have to build this thing out every time you're trying to mess with a LUT. I'm a big fan of simplifying when you can, so you can just stick with doing the creative stuff when you're actually in your grade. No need to remember all of that layer mixer stuff. So if I switch over to this other version of the same shot I have, you can see I didn't do anything else to it besides remove the layer mixer portion. So on node one, we still have the transform into our working color space. And on the last node, we have the transform from working color to display space. Here in the middle, I still have our same LUT as well. Okay, well with the new update, composite modes work without having to do the layer portion. So now I can just right click on just the LUT node here and go straight to color. If you saw the change there, we had the same effect on the image as before where we now retain the color changes, but not the contrast. If I right click again and go to luminosity directly from the node, look at that. Contrast remains, but the color changes have dropped out. The neat thing is that now you can explore all sorts of other composite modes as well. So I was playing with this earlier, but if I click on dark and color, that does something a little bit different now. If I try light and color, once again, I get a slightly different result. Saturation does something really cool that I'm really liking. And this is exactly what I was talking about before. Another way to create a technical change in a creative way that frees me up to just focus on the image and not so much on how to get there. I think this is a great change and I'm happy Resolve has now implemented this. It's certainly gotten me to play with LUTs that I use regularly, but just kind of get some more mileage out of them now. So that's where I'm gonna leave this video for now. Hopefully you guys learned something, not just about a resolve change, but hopefully you learned some more about LUTs and how to use them in both the live environment and this public beta coming soon. Until next time though, go out there and create something. La da